Welcome to Mastering in Logic's guide to Logic Pro X 10.4.5. Hi, I'm Darren, and I'd like to welcome you to this video looking at the new version of Logic. We're going to go through basically some of the new features that I like, some of the plugin updates, things with Apple Loops, automation, key commands, and general things like that. You can only get Logic 10.4.5 if you are on uh, OS 10.13 or higher. One of the big things about this new update is they've redesigned the architecture, the coding, I don't know what you would refer to it as, so that it is much better at processing the threads for the new Mac Pros, which of course can go up to something like 28 cores. Now I'm on a 2013 Mac Pro. It's not a top-end spec Mac Pro. It's, it's pretty fast. It's pretty quick. But this is a project that I was working on for the Cartoon Network uh, for a cartoon called Adventure Time. And you can see this is quite a big template. This has got audio tracks and virtual instruments, virtual instruments that, that are quite heavy on the CPU. You see there's a lot of tracks here. But, you know, we're up to 100 and something tracks and this, this goes on and on. When I was working on this in the older version of Logic Pro X, the threading was up to around about 50%. Uh, and I was getting big spikes on certain instruments sometimes. This is with the new version of Logic, and I don't know if it's something's changed or or what, but you can see that this is a lot lower. This is handling the threading much, much better, and it seems a lot more stable to me as it's as it's playing. So I may be wrong, but performance seems to be better already, and that's you know, on old Macs. Can you imagine what this is going to be like on the new versions and, of course, new iMacs as well? The other thing, of course, is the fact that you can now get up to a thousand tracks in this new version. Uh, that won't actually, actually let me type in a thousand, even though I am on the new version. So, ah, OK, I, I know why. I've got an audio track there. I'm guessing that if I, let's say if I add another one, let's see if Logic will, let me try and type in a thousand. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's that's quite useful to know. So if you have a number of tracks and you want to then go up to a thousand, Logic will automatically add in however many tracks you've got left. As I'm sure you've seen online, there's lots of debate about whether a thousand tracks and a thousand virtual instruments is going to be useful to anyone. Um, I think it's only going to be useful to film composers which have huge templates. I mean, I'm a television composer and I have pretty big templates, but not quite as large as film composers. And of course, dubbing engineers for dubbing for film. So let's look at some of the things that I think are pretty cool. So the new features that have been added, this has been talked about quite a lot. And the new project setting only load plugins needed for project playback reduces load times for large templates. Now this is quite cool, but at the same time, I think it's a double-edged sword. So for example, I've got this project that is not actually a project. It's just a bunch of stuff that I've loaded up. And I've not actually done anything with the project yet, but you can see that the plugins here are loaded uh, across these instruments two, four, and five. And that's because they have MIDI data in each of the track regions. So that means that Logic will automatically load the plugins that are set up here, but the ones that don't have any data, instrument one and three uh, have something on them. I think strings may well be already loaded because I clicked on the channel before and that brings me back to the next point. So when you load the project up, wherever you, you don't have regions or you're not sitting on the actual track channel, Logic won't load the plugin. What it will do when I click on it, you see it now starts to load the plugin. So this means that when you're loading up a project, whatever tracks are not being used, Logic won't load them. Now, the idea behind this is so that it saves on loading time. When you first open up the project, it means the project will load quicker. I think this is a double-edged sword because all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. If I then click on this one, you can see that I have to wait until plugins all load. Now, I've had to wait 
twice now for this to load and this to load. Let's say you've got a project with 100 tracks. As you're going along, you want to start playing around with a piano. You click on the piano and you have to wait for it to load. Then you go to your strings, you click on the strings, you have to wait for the strings to load. So you're kind of constantly having to wait. So I think it, it's a good thing, but I think it has negatives as well. Shift double clicking the background of the tracks area now starts playing from the clicked position. This is really cool. So if I hold shift and double click from wherever I am, it will start to play. Now, let me just turn this off. There we go. So if it's not playing, and double clicking there. Now the reason why I like this is because if I have the cycle region playing for example, let's say I want to play this track. Okay, ignore the sound, it's not really doing anything. If I have the cycle region, every time I hit play, it plays from the beginning of that region. But let's say if I have some instruments over here, and I want to start to play from here. Well, before you'd have to come up to the top, double click or switch the region off, hit the space bar and then click from there. Whereas now what I can do is I can hit shift and it will start playing from there, even with the cycle region. Double click and, and away it goes. I think this is a really, really cool feature it reminds me of working in Pro Tools where you can start the playhead without having to go up to the top. What I can't do though is shift and double click from the region itself. It has to be in one of the grayed out areas or one of the blank spaces on the audio region. Um, so just be aware of that. If you're clicking on the region and you're trying to get the playhead to start playing, it's not going to do it. You have to do it in a clear part of the arrange window. While we're on the subject of the playhead, let's go to a key command, and I think this is really cool. Play, the play from selection key command now takes selected markers into account. So I'm gonna do two here, two key commands. There is now a key command to create a marker by cycle area. So if I bring up the marker window, and I type in marker, you can now see the the key command that I have two key commands that I'm talking about. The first one is this. So create marker by cycle area. And you can see at the moment there's nothing in here. There's no key commands. This didn't exist before. And I think that's why they allow you to designate whichever key commands you want. Um, but this one here, uh, let's do create marker from selected region. So I'm going to do that now. And there you go, you can see with this region, I've actually uh, now created a new marker. So why am I showing you this? The first one is that you can create a key command from the cycle region. I think this is really cool because you couldn't do this before. You couldn't create a marker from the cycle region. So let's say this is a drum part and I wanna put a fill in on the end and I wanna actually write a marker in. I could create my own key command use that key command and a marker will pop up. So this is the other thing about the key commands and referring to the playhead. I have play from region, selected region. So if the cycle region is switched off, if it's on, it will always play from that cycle region, as you know. But if I have it selected as play from region, Whatever region I select, the playhead will always play from that region as long as I don't have cycle region selected. Now what's cool about this is you can now play from the marker. I think that's really cool. You could have a series of markers, intro, verse, chorus, middle section, solo, whatever it is you, you've got, and have the playhead play from the region, but also play from the marker. So you see there, I played from here, here, the marker and here. All right, so let's go to another one. The Expander plugin now offers a redesigned Retina interface. 
So let's just bring this up on here, expander. So there we go, we can just make it bigger and smaller. That's basically all that does, but they've also updated the whole GUI. Um, all new DSer. So this is their brand new DSer 2, which I presume is just the same as the old one, just enhanced with new features. And also it states in the up updated Apple Notes that the frequency response is much finer and also much more more detailed. I'm not going to go into the DSA here. I'm sure you probably know how to use this, but I'm going to do another video on the DSA using it in different creative ways. So if you're interested in learning about how to use the DSA beyond just DSing a vocal, hit subscribe and the bell button now and you'll get that video as soon as it goes live later this week or maybe early next. Uh, but this is really cool. You've got some great new features. You can set the way it re reacts in relative mode or absolute. So absolute is going to be basically absolutely centered on the frequency depending on how you split the range and the filter type. Or relative will give you a broader spectrum of how it works. So I'll do the DS or another time. Hit like and subscribe now and then you'll not miss that video when it comes out. I've got some really, really cool ways of, of showing you how you can use a DSer. All right, so let's look at something else. The recording section of Project Settings offers a new option, Auto Erase Duplicates, which removes duplicate MIDI notes at the same playback position when merge recording MIDI in cycle mode. Okay, so I've got a piano sound here, and all I'm gonna do is record five notes. So you can see that I played five notes. Let's go in and check. Wow, look at my timing. Here you can see there should be two notes here because I actually played this C note twice. But what Logic has done is it's recognized I've played two notes on the same key. Obviously you don't want both of those notes, so it removes one of them. And I think that's really cool. The number of times I've recorded something and I had to go back into the piano roll, delete the note, and then move on. Now I never have to worry about this. I never have to worry about notes being duplicated. All right, let's move on. Pressing Option and Shift while rubber band selecting in the piano roll now creates a new time handles selection. This is really cool. So let's just go back to the region that I had. All right, watch this. So what I'm gonna do is I hold Option, Shift, drag across these regions. You see I'm selecting them. Now what I can do is I can grab these notes that I've selected and you see I can pull them in. So this is now going uh, to quavers and I've got semi quavers. This is awesome. I can drag this out look, across uh, one every two beats. I could do one on every bar and let go of that, highlight them again and just now drag them out. I, I think this is this is really cool. Option click, whoops. Highlight them, option click. Let's do it again. Grab the notes and I can drag them in and out. And I can drag, you can even reverse them. That's that's really cool. I really, really like this. And I think if you've got, let's say you've got a hi-hat pattern on a drum kit, for example, and you decide that you want, you know, one on every beat, but then you don't like it on one on every beat, you decide you want you know, it in eighth notes, then you decide you don't want it in eighth notes, you could do it in sixteenths, like that. And then take the part, copy it over, and and you can experiment and, and come up with different ideas. I think that's a really, really cool feature. Option clicking the on off button for a track now loads and unloads the plugins on the channel strip. Um, this was something that used to confuse me because if I do Alt N, does that bring up? I can never remember. There we go. Right, so what uh, Logic would do when you switch this on and off, let me just switch all of those on, is it would switch the channel off, but I don't think it would completely switch all the plugins off. Now, if you select Option and hit the on off switch, you can see that I have now deselected all of these. Uh, plugins. Now what that means is that the CPU is no longer 
having to work harder because of plugins loaded that I'm not using. If I play the keyboard, I don't get any sound. If I switch them back on, the plugins you can see were switched off because they have to be loaded again. So that's option and then on off. All right, so those are some of my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and you'll catch that new video on the DSer when it comes out later in the week. And see you soon. Cheers.